I definitely agree with you on that. But how do you feel about Trump's second assassination attempt? I believe that both Donald Trump assassination attempts were staged to improve his popularity, to improve his popularity, and to rebrand him as a victim and not a perpetrator. If you noticed, ever since the first assassination attempt, there has been almost no conversation on January 6th. There has been almost no conversation in Donald Trump initiating a riot in the nation's capital. No conversation at all. That was the purpose of these assassination attempts, to make Donald Trump look like a victim of crime and not a perpetrator of it. And they have done a very good job doing so. They, 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 they playing games. They playing games, bro. They are absolutely playing games. You know, Art, when I look at this election, and as I've looked at this election since the last time you and I spoke, which was right after, you know, Kamala declared she was going to step in with, with Joe, I believe that the global white power structure wants Kamala. I absolutely do. The Democratic agenda is so in alignment with the one world order, everything from the LGBT to the kids to the COVID, you know, all of that is in alignment with what they want to do. The problem is Donald Trump is so popular. See, Donald Trump is a nationalist art. They don't want a nationalist. They don't want someone who's looking out for the best interests of America. They want someone who's looking out for the best interests of the global elites. And that is the Democrats. The question is, are they willing to cheat Trump out of the election and risk a full scale revolt by poor white America? That's the question. That is the that that is the question. Are we willing to risk a social catastrophe if Donald Trump is cheated out of the election? In my opinion, Art, I believe he's the front runner. Even though they're reporting that Kamala has a slight edge, I'm not buying it. I believe Donald Trump is the front runner. And I believe he won the last election. I believe he beat Joe Biden, but got cheated. And it don't make a difference to me who wins because none of them care about black folks. I want to be clear about that. But I believe he beat, I believe he, be, he beat Joe Biden. If he gets cheated again, I don't think white America takes this laying down. I cannot see white America taking this laying down if he gets cheated again. The question is, are they willing to risk a civil war, a potential civil war in this country if he's cheated again? That's the question. Brother, when I watched the presidential debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, which was a complete joke, when he said the migrants are eating cats and dogs, I thought he was talking about the Latin migrants, which was still inappropriate, mind you, still unacceptable. But I thought he was speaking of the Latin migrants. I had no idea he was talking about my people. So I want to be very clear to everybody. Haitian Americans, Haitian immigrants are my family. They are my brothers and my sisters. Do we have some Haitian coons? Yes, we do. Have I met Haitian people who think they better than black people? Yes, I have. But I also have supporters and allies who are, who are Haitian, who stand by me and support me. They are Pan-Africanists. They stand by their American African brothers and sisters, and they have no issue or no division at all with us. If it wasn't for the Haitian Revolution, the Nat Turner revolution may have never happened. The Gabriel Prosser revolution may have never happened. The Denmark Vesey revolution may have never happened. The German uh, coast uprising in Louisiana headed by our ancestor Charles De Long may have never happened. My point is, Art, there's evidence, although not conclusive in every case, there's evidence that every major slave revolt we had on the North American continent was inspired by the Haitian Revolution. That means our freedom itself was inspired 
by the Haitian Revolution. So I take issue with any American African who wants to throw our Haitian brothers and sisters under the bus. I will not stand for it. I am a big fan of Toussaint La Overture. I am a big fan of Jean-Jacques Dessalines. I am a big fan of Bookman, Cecil Fataman, Mat Kandal. The Haitian Revolution started on my birthday. Anybody who has an issue with the Haitian people has an issue with Dr. Umar. Now, to your point, when Donald Trump made that comment about our Haitian brothers and sisters stealing people's pets and eating them, it triggered an entire backlash of white racism and rage. There have been no less than 30 bomb threats in Springfield, Illinois, as a result of Donald Trump and Senator Vance's words. In fact, the Ku Klux Klan took Donald Trump's words, one of the branches of the Ku Klux Klan up there in, in uh, Ohio, they took Donald Trump's words and posted it on their websites. You got Haitian brothers and sisters who are now fearing for their life from racist white people all throughout Ohio and across this country, because not only did Donald Trump say it, not only did Senator Vance repeat it, they did not backtrack. Even when the mayor of Springfield and the governor of Ohio came forward and said there is no evidence to support Donald Trump's baseless claims about the Haitian people. Guess what? Senator Vance went right back on his Twitter. Donald Trump went right back on his Twitter and they continue to repeat and fabricate lies, racist, stereotypical lies about our Haitian brothers and sisters, putting them in harm's way. And I don't know if you know this, but earlier today or yesterday, there was a Haitian American organization that filed criminal charges against former President Trump and Senator Vance. They want them arrested and charged with inciting violence against a migrant population and inciting violence on American soil. Donald Trump should have been arrested by Homeland Security or the FBI and his vice presidential candidate Vance should have also been arrested. Nothing has been done. Could you imagine, Art, if I went into a Ukrainian migrant community in America, Dr. Umar, let's say I go into a Ukrainian American migrant community or I go into an Afghan migrant community or I go into a Latino migrant community and say that they eat in dogs and cats and they need to be deported. Do you not think I would be arrested? I would be put under the jail. But Donald Trump, a privileged white man, and Senator Vance, a privileged white man, can put our Haitian brothers and sisters in harm's way and ain't nobody doing nothing about it, including Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, who are the ones who brought them here in the first place. A man found guilty of is running for president of the United States. If you told me that, there's no way I would believe you. That somebody proven to have raped someone in court can still be allowed to. He's a convicted felon for other reasons on top of that. So you got a convicted felon, someone who was found liable in civil court for rape, running to be president and got the audacity to spread dangerous, untrue lies and stereotypes about our Haitian African brothers and sisters in Springfield, Ohio. I stand with the community in Springfield, Ohio, and I hope I, my American African brothers and sisters in Springfield are doing all we can to look out for our Haitian African brothers and sisters. We better be careful how we treat the Haitians in America. You know why? Because the closest country to this country is what, Art? Haiti. Haiti. And God forbid if things if things get too rough for us here, guess where we can guess is the closest place we can get to Haiti. So we need to keep our relationship with Haiti on positive footing at all times, because Haiti is the closest independent black country to the United States. Don't forget that. Don't burn that bridge because you might have to walk over it. And remember, the Haitian people, it was declared in their constitution, in their constitution, that any African in the world, especially an enslaved African, 
if you can make it to Haiti, if you can get to Haiti, you will be considered a citizen and you will be respected and protected as a member of the Haitian people. The Haitian revolution rolled out the red carpet for the American African brothers and sisters who were still enslaved. They did that for us 200 years ago. And we owe it to them to roll out the red carpet for us as well.